In this online lecture, we're going to talk about nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And our first key point here is that nucleophilic aromatic substitution, NAS, requires a benzene ring with a leaving group, a nucleophile, and at least one electron withdrawing group. We're also going to see here number two that only the ortho and para intermediate anions are stabilized in nucleophilic aromatic substitution Therefore, only benzene rings with electron withdrawing groups that are ortho and or para to the leaving group will react. And we're also going to see here number three, the mechanism for this reaction is termed sometimes addition elimination or SNAR. We'll see why it's called that way in a few minutes here. But first, let's look at our overall reaction here. The product for this reaction is this molecule right here. And notice what's unique about this reaction. What we've learned previously is electrophilic aromatic substitution. And that involves, remember, adding electrophiles to a benzene ring. And notice what's different here. Now we're adding this thing right here, which happens to be a nucleophile. So therefore, this is definitely not electrophilic aromatic substitution. It must be some different reaction and therefore have a different mechanism. And let's take the time to make an important observation here. All that's happening is we're replacing this Cl right here with the added nucleophile. But let's look at the mechanism here to see how this happened. The first step of the mechanism involves the nucleophile attacking the benzene ring at the carbon that's bearing this Cl. Remember, we've learned before in many online lectures that halogens act as pretty good leaving groups. And we're going to see that's exactly the role Cl is going to play here. But we'll get to that in a second. After this attack, the pi electrons in the benzene ring jump up on one of the carbons here. And what we end up with is this as an intermediate. And you might notice from this intermediate that it has resonance. For instance, I can say the electrons here fall down between these two carbons and these pi electrons jump up on this carbon right here. That would give me this resulting resonance structure. And you might even notice that we can keep going with this type of resonance. In fact, we can say these electrons jump down here and then these pi electrons jump up on that carbon. You would end up with this as a resulting resonance structure. So, almost like electrophilic aromatic substitution, Nucleophilic aromatic substitution also has the three general resonance structures. But there's something unique about the second resonance structure that we should take a closer look at. Let me do this. Let me expand out that NO2 group into its true Lewis dot form like this. Remember, NO2 groups are electron withdrawing. They inductively pull electrons away from the ring and they also can do it resonancely. Which means, remember, I can draw this resonance structure. I can say these electrons fall down this way towards the nitrogen and these pi electrons jump up on that oxygen. This gives me an additional resonance structure right here like this. This means that the NO2 group is adding stability to the intermediate of this reaction which means it's also helping this reaction go down this pathway. So here's what I want you to know so far. Going back to our original reaction, this NO2 group here was not here just for decoration. It was necessary in order to help drive this reaction. In fact, this reaction will not happen unless there's an electron withdrawing group such as NO2 on the benzene ring. And careful here, put this in the big picture. We learned before that NO2 groups deactivate benzene rings. But careful, that was for electrophilic aromatic substitution. NO2 groups don't always deactivate rings. In fact, in this case, an NO2 group is activating the benzene ring, but towards nucleophilic aromatic substitution. So let's go back to our mechanism here. There's something else here I want to show you concerning these intermediates. Notice in all of these resonance structures, Look where the lone pair of electrons are ending up. In this case, notice they're ending up para to the original carbon that had the Cl on it. But the lone pair electrons are also ending up ortho to the Cl. 
We can see that here, and we can see that over here. What I want you to learn from this, basically, is that in order to help drive this reaction, we not only want electron withdrawing groups, but we'd like them to be present on the ortho and para positions. And that is, remember, ortho and para to the original leaving group, such as Cl, on the benzene ring. The electron withdrawing group on the ortho para positions will help stabilize these intermediates. So, so far we've explained why this reaction goes down its pathway in the first place. But the next thing is, how does this reaction end? Well, let's talk about that here. The next step of the mechanism involves these electrons falling down between these two carbons and booting off the leaving group here. The result of this move right here is our overall product for the reaction. So, there's technically two steps in this reaction. This would be step one right here, the attack of the nucleophile at the carbon bearing the leaving group. And then step two, regenerating the aromatic ring and booting off the Cl. Step one technically is an addition reaction because we're adding two things together. Whereas step two we can see since we're forming a double bond and booting off a leaving group is technically an elimination reaction. But overall, we're substituting here. Again, remember the nucleophile is replacing the Cl leaving group. So that's why sometimes this reaction is called an SNAR reaction. And that basically means S for substitution, N for adding a nucleophile, and AR because an aromatic ring is involved. Now that we understand this reaction, let me show you some of the ways it can be presented in your textbook or on an orgo exam. Remember, this is our overall reaction here. But sometimes it's not written out like this. Sometimes they'll represent the reaction this way, with these particular reagents right here. Notice what we have here. We have OH minus, and in parentheses they have pH 14. Remember what that means from general chemistry. A pH of 14 means that the solution is very basic. And the reason why we need a highly basic solution for this reaction is because for this particular case, we only have one electron withdrawing group here in this pair position. However, compare this reaction to this specific reaction right here. Notice in this case, we have three electron withdrawing groups and notice they're all in the right positions, ortho and para, to the carbon that bears the leaving group. But look at our reagents here. Now we only need a pH of 7 for this reaction to happen. As in, the solution doesn't have to be very basic in order for this to happen. That's simply because the benzene ring has many electron withdrawing groups in the right position, and that's what's helping drive this reaction. So we don't need as basic conditions as we saw in the first example. So let's look at some sample problems here to make sure you got this. Again, let's pretend you're on an orgo exam and you're asked to predict the product of this reaction. The first thing I want you to notice is you're adding a nucleophile. So this couldn't be electrophilic aromatic substitution. It would have to be nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And we know, remember, in order for this reaction to happen, it has to have a carbon that has a leaving group on it. In this case, Cl will do just fine. And remember, ortho and para to this carbon, we'd like to have strong electron withdrawing groups connected. And we do. So then, again, for the quick product here on your orgo exam, you're simply going to replace the Cl with the added nucleophile. And we end up with this as a result. That's your thought process here to get to the quick product on our orgo exam. Remember, there are times on your orgo exam when all you want is the quick product and you don't have the time to go through the mechanism. So we want to have a method to quickly get to product. Let's look at another sample problem here. Again, from the beginning, what would make you think nucleophilic aromatic substitution? Well, first of all, you have a benzene ring and you're adding this, which has a negative charge, which is clearly a nucleophile. So then you ask yourself, well, in order to pull this off, I'm going to need again here a carbon that has a decent leaving group. BR will do just fine. 
and ortho and pair to that carbon, we should have nice electron withdrawing groups. And since we do, we know to replace the Br with the added nucleophile, giving us this right here as our product. Typically on organic chemistry exams, when you learn electrophilic aromatic substitution, you're also taught nucleophilic aromatic substitution. So it's very likely that both of these reactions will be on your exam. So that's why we want to have a method of knowing which one of the two reactions we're dealing with so we can get to our product. So what are our key points here? What have we learned? Number one, nucleophilic aromatic substitution requires a benzene ring with a leaving group, a nucleophile, and at least one electron withdrawing group. And we also saw number two, only the ortho and para intermediate anions are stabilized in nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Therefore, only benzene rings with electron withdrawing groups that are ortho and or para to the leaving group will react. We also saw number three, that the mechanism for this reaction is sometimes called addition elimination or SNAR, which is short for SN aromatic.